Welcome to The Daily Show, coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, night three. We've been having so much fun here. Every single day I learn something new about the place. You know, like yesterday, I learned that people in Georgia have a really interesting philosophy about food. You know, yeah, yesterday I asked someone, I said, hey, where should I eat? And they were like, oh, yo, you got to get the wings at JR Crickets. And I was like, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, people were like, yeah. I was like, so, so what should I order? And I was like, oh, you got to get the lemon pepper wet, extra crispy, extra sprinkles. And they're like, but you need like extra, extra sprinkles, extra sprinkles, like extra, extra sprinkles. Like it sounds like a lot of sodium. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you got to go to American Deli afterwards and get the peach soda. That's what you got to do. And then she said my favorite thing. She was like, yeah, because you see, you see, because when you have that much salt, you got to cancel it out with the sugar. That's what we do in Atlanta. <laughs> like it's a balanced diet. I appreciate that. It was delicious. <laughs> but I slept for a week. <laughs> I've also learned that people in Atlanta love sports. Wow. This is like a big sports town. Like everyone here, everyone here excited for the big Georgia-Tennessee game on Saturday? Yeah? People are hyped for that. It's a big sports town. I've really, and I get it. I get it. I mean, the Braves won the World Series, right? The, the University of Georgia won the national championship. You know? Yeah, the, the, the Falcons have really cool jerseys. I see you. <laughs> And the city, I feel like the city has extra energy now because the midterms are a few days away. You can feel it, right? I see the certs, people out there getting ready to vote. Everybody's voting, breaking early voting records. That's what's happening out here. People are out there making their voices heard. Everybody's standing in line for hours and hours. I stood in line yesterday four hours. That's how long I stood. Got to the front, turns out it was a place called Slutty Vegan. Yeah, I didn't know that was a popular restaurant in Atlanta. I thought it was just someone who sleeps around and likes tofu. <laughs> the line would have been longer for that. Uh, but because the midterms, the midterms are on, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. There's ads everywhere in Atlanta. And, and every ad, every ad that I've watched in the city is a campaign ad right now. Everything. You know this. You've seen it. Like, I watched TV for 10 minutes last night, and I saw 30 minutes worth of ads. <laughs> and the thing, that's, the thing that stuck out to me was how most of them were mean as shit. Georgia would be different with Abrams. She pushed more COVID lockdowns, wanted businesses closed and kids locked out of schools. Abrams' crime plan? Eliminate cash bail. The same failed liberal scheme causing crime to surge in other states. Stacey Abrams and Raphael Warnock support aborting babies not just at six weeks, not just at 15 weeks when a baby can feel pain, but up to 40 weeks. Talk shows magazine covers, television cameos, Celebrity Stacy, a perfect governor for liberal elites, just not hardworking Georgians. Damn. You know, you know, if, if, you, if you only knew Stacey Abrams from attack ads in Georgia, you would think she was Darth Vader combined with Thanos, combined with that asshole who cut you off in the traffic. Pure evil. Stacey Abrams does all of it. And by the way, I don't understand that last part. What, what was that? She's bad because she gets interviewed on TV shows? Like, look at this. What, what, what are they trying to say, huh? What is this about? What is this? Why is this in an attack ad? She hugs Trevor Noah, which means she wants to turn America into Africa. There's nothing wrong with hugging me. I give good hugs. I mean, on the flip side, this, this is good for me. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. No, because now I have a great excuse. Anytime I don't want to hang out with anybody, you know, they'll be like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm like, ah, oh, I would love to, but if we're seen together, it could be used in an attack ad. <laughs> you know, yeah, if you ever choose to run for governor of Georgia, it's just going to spoil you. I can't do that to you, you know. <laughs> Maybe you should just Uber home from surgery. I think it would be better. <laughs> and it's not just in Georgia. This is the thing I've realized. It's not just in Georgia. And it's not just mean in this moment. It's getting meaner every single day. Every campaign in America right now is flooding the airwaves with attack ads. Everyone. My opponent will raise your attack. My opponent will cut your health care. My opponent. And it's always that voice, too. Right? 
So is that a tech ad voice? I feel like you can say anything in that voice and it sounds terrible, you know? My opponent will donate his kidney to you. <gasps> that son of a bitch! Wait, what? I, I need a kidney. <laughs> you know, if you ask me, honestly, I think attack ads should be legal. Yeah, I mean it. I think attack ads should be legal. Not campaign ads, not campaign ads, attack ads. I'll tell you why. First of all, first of all, I think it's because they only drive up polarization and hate. That's what they do, right? And secondly, politicians should be earning your vote by telling you what they're gonna do, not just by shitting on other candidates. Just tell me what you'll do if you want me to vote. Don't tell me about the other person. Because you realize they're, they're auditioning for the job. We don't accept this shit in any other job, right? There's no other job where you can apply for it and then your resume isn't what you do. It's just a list of other reasons that the other people suck. You can't do that anywhere else. You can't just be sitting there and be like, oh, what are my strengths? Well, I think you should be focusing on Anthony's weaknesses. Yeah. That guy types with his index fingers. Yeah. So when do I start? You realize that's not campaigning. That's not winning votes, right? It's not, it shouldn't be a part of democracy. It's basically the same strategy every R&B song from the 90s used. You remember that? Every song would just be some guy just coming out there like, girl, you know your man ain't treating you right. He never buys you flowers. He's never taking you to Disney World. She'd be like, well, uh, are you gonna take me to Disney World, girl? This ain't about me right now. This is about your man and how he ain't doing you right. And by the way, my car's in the shop, so, uh, I might need to borrow yours. <laughs> like, it's, it's not helpful. It's not healthy. And here's the thing, here's the thing. It would be one thing if attack ads were just highlighting policy differences between candidates. I, my opponent wants to raise your taxes, but I want to lower them. That's, that's one thing. But that's not what attack ads do. Because like everything else in America, it has to be supersized. Left-wing politicians are pushing sexual agendas on our children. X-rated drag shows for kids. Pornography in elementary schools. Mehmet Oz doesn't want you to know about his deadly experiments on puppies. Katie Hobbs organized a mock slave auction. Katie Hobbs, guilty of racism. No one is safe with liberal Amelia Sykes. Babies have to watch their backs because of Tina Kotek. Tina Kotek, too extreme for Oregon. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Babies have to watch their backs? If you're a baby watching that, you are crapping your pants. More than usual, you are shitting yourself. I've, I've never seen an attack ad trying to scare babies. It was like, watch out babies. Tina Kodak is here. And now she's not. And now she's here. And now she's not. And now she's here. And by the way, I know. I know there's some people who are thinking right now, oh, but Trevor, don't I deserve to know the bad things uh, about someone who's running for office? Yes, I think you do. I think you do. And ideally, you would get that information from America's responsible, objective news media. That's where you should be getting it from. It doesn't need to be in an attack ad. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing, in my opinion, these ads are not helping. They don't help. They don't help, right? Because they don't just attack policy. They portray opponents as evil, inherently evil monsters. That poisons the entire country. Because what happens to bipartisanship after that? Do people ever think of that, huh? You, you can't be like, yes, I, I said my opponent wants to drink the blood of children, but now that the election is over, that doesn't mean we can't work together on infrastructure. <laughs> Get on in here, you pedophile. Let's do this deal. You can't do that. Why would anyone support that? And what's even worse is that many attack ads are just straight up lies, right? Straight up lies. Like for instance, um, there, there's, a, there's an ad in uh, Texas, Greg Abbott put up this ad, right? A TV ad that spliced together different quotes from Beto O'Rourke to make it seem like he said something that he didn't say, right? Yeah, campaign flyers in uh, North Carolina, they show candidates wearing defund the police t-shirts that they never actually wore. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, well, as long as you're photoshopping pics, why not go all the way? Just go all the way. 
Yeah, just be like, look, he's not just throwing out a garbage bag, he's throwing out the new Taylor Swift album. You monster. There's drinking children's blood and then there's evil. Oh, and if you want to see just how bad the lies in these ads can get, look no further than this race in California. We want to show you perhaps the most dishonest TV campaign ad we've ever seen. Some politicians think they should control your child's education. We're trying to indoctrinate our students in communism. Jay Chen is running for Congress to represent Southern Californians. Here's what Chen actually said. You know, I'm going to be a recipient of some of these attacks, unfortunately. They're going to be claiming that because our school district was teaching Chinese, that meant we were trying to indoctrinate our students in communism. Literally, that will be one of the points of attack. Huh? Look at that. He even called it. He said, these people are probably going to claim that we're teaching kids communism. And I guess his opponents saw that and they were like, well, that's a great idea. We should do that. Yeah, we should do that. Because here's the thing. It's bad enough. It's bad enough to attack someone. But to pretend they said something they didn't say and attack them for that, that's, that's even worse. You're attacking them for something they didn't say. You realize if you edit it, the context is out of everything, right? That, that Cardi B song, WAP. That's a song about female sexual empowerment. But if you edit out the P, now it's just a song about wet ass. <laughs> no one's gonna be dancing in the club to that song. Huh? Get a bucket and a mop for this wet ass. Oh, please do not back that thing up on me. You can't do that. It's not good for democracy. And and here's the thing that, that may blow your mind, I know because it, it blew mine, is that it's not illegal to line attack ads. Did you know this? Yeah, it is not illegal. The courts have said that the government cannot ban lying in political ads because it falls under free speech. Yeah. And look, maybe you agree. Maybe you're one of those people who thinks, oh, the government shouldn't get involved in policing what's true or false in ads. But here's the thing, it already does, right? If you lie in an ad for a car or, or, for, a, or for a cell phone or for even toilet paper, the FTC will ban that ad. Yeah, which is a weird set of priorities, right? Because if you lie in an election ad, that could undermine your democracy. But if you lie about how many sheets are in a roll of toilet paper, <laughs> I mean, the worst that could happen is you end up with a wet ass. <laughs> so, if you ask me, America has everything backwards. If there's one type of ad you're not allowed to lie in, it should be your political ads, right? Not only is that better for democracy, not only is it better for democracy, but it means you would be allowed to lie in commercial ads, and I think that would be funny as hell. Chef Boyardee says his beefaroni is quick and convenient, but 40% of all people who ate beefaroni immediately died. In the other 60% became transgender. And what's Chef Boyardee hiding under his hat? Is it critical race theory? He won't say. Chef Boyardee, wrong for dinner, wrong for America. Paid for by Concerned Citizens for SpaghettiOs. See? Now that's what we need more of.